Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Our text for our meditation this morning is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. So far, our text. Your Christian friends, I need to tell you the story of two individuals. The first one is named Peter. He's a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norwegian. He's a gifted man, but he has a little bit of problem. You see, he likes to play games. Not just any games like tic-tac-toe or your garden variety video game. Games of chance. He loves the thrill of winning. He loves that thrill so much, he finds that it consumes his thought. When can he go and play again? Before very long, he finds himself addicted. He knows it. He tells himself he can control it. And yet after the second job wasn't enough to pay for his habit, he started breaking in to businesses, to cars, stealing things so he could fence them and then feed his addiction. He was in deep. He had lost his job, all of his friends, his family didn't want to speak to him anymore, and he finds himself before the judge. The judge says, you really screwed up, Peter. And Peter acknowledges it. And the judge says, the good news is that society is not going to lock you up and throw away the key. We have the best program money can buy. It's ten steps, and we want you to know that we're all rooting for you. So Peter is hopeful. He's excited. He walks out of the courtroom. He immerses himself in this ten-step process. He does everything he can to remove himself from his addiction, but he fails fails again. And before long, he finds it doesn't matter if he could find a place to live. He would rather find the thrill of winning than anything else in life. It consumes him. And before long, he gets arrested, and he finds himself before the judge, and the judge says, Peter, what happened? We gave you a second chance. And Peter is speechless. He says, I failed. I, I can't do anything. And the judge says, Peter, I know. You're not alone. Most people who go through this 10-step process fail. And they're right back here before me. So we're going to try something different, something never, never before done. What we're going to do is uh, take away all of your debts, all of your prison time. It's all gone. And Peter's getting a little nervous. It sounds too good to be true. Judge, why? The answer is, well, there's an individual who has stepped up his game and he wants you to know, and everybody else, frankly, that they don't have to pay for their sins or their addictions or anything. He's going to take it over. He's going to spend time in jail for me, Peter replies. The judge nods. It sounds crazy, but yes, it's true. Well, Peter says, well, where can I sign? This is amazing. And the judge says, don't worry about it. Your signature is worthless anyway. All the times that you failed, nobody cares about you. But this guy named Jesus, he's taken your place, and you don't have to sign anything. Here is the contract that's written down for you. And Peter reads it over, and sure enough, Jesus does everything. Takes his spot in jail, takes his debts. There's nothing more that Peter needs to do. He's a free man. He can walk away. And it's just washing over Peter the reality of the situation. And as he leaves the courtroom, Jesus is sitting right there, and he goes up and he thanks him. 
And he says, Jesus, what can I do? And Jesus looks at him and smiles and says, stop gambling. Now Peter leaves that courtroom and he never stops gambling. But he does try. The rest of his life, he dedicates himself to no longer gambling. And even though he fails, he gets a little bit better at not gambling. He carries his disease with him to the grave. And he tries to stay away from it as best he can. The difference between those two is law motivation, how you need to clean up your act or else. Even if it's a positive, we're going to give you money even, or negative, we're going to throw you in jail. That's still law motivation. Gospel motivation, the power of the gospel, is when God comes and forgives Peter. And his power to change comes from the Spirit. Now I don't say this to belittle ten-step processes. Because you can beat most addictions in this world. If you go see your doctor, there is counseling that can help and change. That's real. But I'll say that the greatest agent for change is your God, because he comes with him all of the power of the Holy Spirit that changes hearts and minds. It doesn't necessarily change the realities of the physical addiction that happens in your brain when dopamine and serotonin and all those come rushing in and your body just loves it. There's a physical side to all addiction, of course. And yet sin is a whole other animal, isn't it? All of you are addicted to sin and you cannot stop. And yet I said there were two individuals at the beginning of this sermon, didn't I? Because the tale isn't just about Peter. I want to introduce you to Paul. He's a blonde-haired, green-eyed Norwegian. There's a little bit of difference in the, in the, in the Norwegians. And uh, P- Paul comes into the judge's courtroom, the exact same story as Peter, lost everything, gambling and addiction. And the judge gives him the 10-step the process. He fails. Paul comes back before the judge. The judge offers him the same forgiveness and the same clean bill of slate. But Paul says, Judge, I'm my own man. There's no way I'm doing this. I know I'm in debt. I I know that I have jail time. But tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve my jail time and pay my debt to society. When I'm done, I know that we're digging cable for fiber from Winston to Raleigh. I'm going to dig a ditch and help in that chain gang the rest of my days. I'll work for a dollar a day. I don't care. But I want people to know that I'm not a freeloader. The judge kind of shakes his head and says, that's not really going to do any good. You're never going to pay your debts. But Paul shakes his head and says, I don't care. That's what I'm doing. He says, I want to die knowing that I tried Judge shrugs and sends Paul at the door. Now, of those two gamblers, both are addicts, both are hopeless, and yet the one clung to his own ability and the old way of thinking and would go to the grave knowing that, well, it's all on him, but he's a clat, just a failure. And I do know people like that. And it's heartbreaking, frankly. Because the truth is, when Jesus walked up to Jerusalem, he wept. He wept because he knew that there were people in there who would reject him and didn't want the forgiveness that he offered. That's part of what makes my job sad. In some ways, it's joyful. It is a joy when I get to share the gospel and work with people. My ministry has been a joy-filled one, but not completely. And if you look in what the prophet Jeremiah says, everybody knew, from the Jews on through the time of history, something had to change. There was nothing wrong with God's old covenant that he gave to the people at Sinai. All of those commandments... This is just the seventh commandment that it touches on. You shall not steal. You should help your neighbor keep his money or property or not get it by dishonest dealing. 
And that greed is what's the sin. It consumes your soul and your heart. And even if you're not careful, it becomes a physical addiction. The problem isn't with those rules. The problem is with us and that we can't follow them. And that's where this text almost doesn't make any sense. See, God describes what that new state looks like. Verses 31 and 32, he just describes it and talks about the failures. And then he says, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. And it's, it's too good to believe. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor saying, or a man his brother saying, know the Lord. Because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. How? How is that possible? Keyword is four. This is how it's happening. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Beautiful gospel. And what makes it even more powerful is that Jeremiah had nothing good to... He's, God told Jeremiah, your ministry will be a failure. Get going. Jeremiah is the weeping prophet because he watched Jerusalem go down into ashes. And there were people who saw this happening and went to ashes happily. I can't imagine anything more hopeless and sad. And yet God has something far different planned. On this sudden day of judgment, hear the Gospel and know that that walk from the bed to the kitchen, from your car to the pew, I don't know, what, what is the longest walk for you? Whatever that is, get used to walking it. Because I, I'm sorry to say, you're not going to stop sinning. You can minimize the sin the more you work at it, and you will stop. I praise God that Peter was able to change any of his habits at all. But your addiction to sin is only something that you can maybe mitigate. Go to that cross frequently for the forgiveness that's only found there. Because it's there that you can find forgiveness, peace, and change for your life. Dear friends, that is God's rehabilitation program. Amen. Please stand. Now the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. We now confess our Christian faith using